is foul and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filth the air. What bloody man is that? He can report, as seemeth by his plight, of the revolt, the new estate. This is the sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend! Say to the king the knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, from the western isles, of kerns and gallow glasses is supplied but all's too weak for brave macbeth well he deserves that name disdaining fortune with his brandished steel which smoked with bloody execution like valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him till he unseamed him from the knave to the chaps and fixed his head upon our battlements O oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentleman, who comes here? The worthy Thane of Ross. Whence camest thou, worthy Thane? From Fife, great king, where the Norwayan banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict, till that Bologna's bridegroom, lapped in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point, rebellious, arm against arm, curving his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness! No more that Thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go, pronounce his present death. And with his former title, greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. A drum, a drum, Macbeth doth come. The, the weird, weird sisters, sisters hand, hand in hand, posters of the sea and land, land. thus to go about, about, about thrice, thrice to thine, and thrice to mine, and thrice, thrice again to make up nine. nine. Peace, the charms wound up. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. What are these, so withered and so wild in their attire, that look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are aren't? Live you, or are you aught that man may question? All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth. Thou shalt be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are ye fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope, that he seems wrapped with all. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time, and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak them to me, who neither beg nor fear your favours nor your hate. Lesser than Macbeth, and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So I'll hail Macbeth and Banquo. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more. By Sinal's death I know I am Thane of Glam's. But how of Cawdor? The Thane of Cawdor lives, a prosperous gentleman. And to be king stands not within the prospect of belief no more than to be Cawdor. Say from whence you owe this strange intelligence. Or why, upon this blasted heath, you stop our way with such prophetic greeting. Speak, I charge you! The earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air. Were such things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane root that takes reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And Thane of Cawdor too, weren't it not so? Who's here? The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. And, for an earnest of a greater honour, he bade me from him call thee Thane of Cawdor, in which addition hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What? Can the devil speak true? 
This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion, whose horrid image doth unfix my hair, and make my seat at heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Look how our partner's wrapped. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir. Come what come may, time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Give me your favor. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us toward the king. Is execution done on Cawdor? Are not those in commission yet returned? My liege, they are not yet come back. But I have spoke with one that saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like the leaving it. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. O oh, worthiest cousin, the sin of my ingratitude even now is heavy on me. Thou art so far before that swiftest wing of recompense is slow to overtake thee. Would thou hadst less deserved, that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine, only I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your Highness part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state children and servants, which do but what they should, by doing everything safe toward your love and honor. Stars hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. True, worthy Banquo. He is full so valiant, and in his commendations I am fed. It is a banquet to me. Let's after him, whose care is gone before to bid us welcome. It is a peerless kinsman. Glance thou art, and Cawdor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. Hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. What is your tidings? The king comes here to-night. Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him? Who wert so would have informed for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thane is coming. One of my fellows had the speed of him, who, almost dead for breath, had scarcely more than would make up his message. Give him tending. He brings great news. The raven himself is hoarse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits, that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts, and take my milk, for gall you murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, 
thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark, to cry, Hold! Hold! Great glums! Worthy Cawdor! My dearest love, Duncan comes here to-night. And when goes hence? To-morrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favour ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence, and catch with his surcease success, that but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all. Here, but here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we'd jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here, that we but teach bloody instructions, which, being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, and as his host, who should against his murderers shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity, like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye, that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. How now? What news? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honoured me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which will be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valour as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteem'st the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat of the adage? For thee peace! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast wast then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves and that their fitness now doth unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender tis to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums, and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail? But screw your courage to the sticking place, and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convince that memory, the water of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbic only, when in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers, who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men-children only, for thy undaunted metal 
should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received, when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber, and used the very daggers that they have done? Who dares receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and clamour roar upon his death? I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. see before me, the handle toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. There's no such thing. Now, or the one half world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Whilst I thread, he lives, words to the heat of deeds to cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark! Peace! It was the owl that shrieked, the fatal bellman which gives the sterns good night. Alack, I am afraid they have awaked, and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Hark! I lay their daggers ready. He could not miss em. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. My husband! I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep, The innocent sleep, Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life, Sore labor's bath, Balm of hurt minds, Chief nourisher in life's feast. What do you mean? Still it cried, Sleep no more to all the house. Glams hath murdered sleep, And therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them, and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I am afraid to think what I have done. Look on't again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are as but pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal, for it must seem their guilt. <laughs> what whence is that knocking? 
Thou list with me, when every noise appalls me. What hands are here? <sighs> they pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand will rather the multitudinous seas incarnadine, making the green one red. My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it, then? To know my deed, twere best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking! I would thou couldst! Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were porter of Elgate, he should have old turning the key. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there in the name of Beelzebub? Here's a farmer that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Come in time. Have napkins to know about you. Here you'll sweat for it. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed, that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock and... Drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Marry, sir, nose painting, sleep, and urine. Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but it takes away the performance. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep, and giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That it did, sir, it, in the very throat on me. Is thy master stirring? Our knocking has awaked him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy thane? Not yet. The night has been unruly where we lay. Our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, lamentings hear I, the air strange screams of death, and prophesying with accent terrible of dire compunction and confused events, new hashed to the awful time. The obscure bird clamored the live long night. Some say the earth was favorous and did shake. Twas a rough night. Oh, horror, horror, horror! Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke ope the Lord's anointed temple, and stole thence the life of the building. Mean you his majesty? Approach the chamber, and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourselves. Awake, awake, ring the alarm bell, murdered in treason. Banquel and Donalbane, Malcolm, awake! Shake off this drowsy sleep, death's counterfeit, and look on death itself. Up, up, and see the great doom's image. Malcolm, Banquo, as from your graves rise up. What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak, speak. Oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. What is amiss? Your royal father's murdered. Oh, by whom? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were embashed with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped, we found upon their pillows. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate, and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man! Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? What should be spoken here, where our fate hid in an auger hole may rush and seize us? Let's away, our tears are not yet brewed. What will you do? 
let's not consort with them to show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy i'll to england to ireland i our separated fortunes shall keep us both the safer where we are there is daggers in men's smiles the near in blood the nearer bloody this murderous shaft that shot hath not yet lighted and our safest way is to avoid the aim therefore to horse and let us not be dainty of leave-taking but shift away there's warrant in that theft which steals itself when there's no mercy left is known who did this more than bloody deed those that macbeth hath slain alas the day what good could they pretend they were suborned malcolm and donalbane the king's two sons are stolen away and fled which puts upon them suspicion of the deed then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon macbeth he is already named and gone to scone to be invested Thou hast it now, King, Cordor, Glamis, all as the weird women promised, and I fear thou playedst most foully fought. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine, why, by the verities on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope? But hush, no more. Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great feast, and all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to the which my duties are with the most indissoluble tie for ever knit. Ride you this afternoon? Aye, my good lord. Goes Fleance with you? Aye, my good lord. Our time does call upon us. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night, to make society the sweeter welcome. We will keep ourselves till supper time alone. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked, as it is said Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If be so, for Banquo's issue have I filled my mind. For them the gracious Duncan have I murdered, put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them, and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seeds of Banquo kings. Rather than so, Come fate into the list, and champion me the utterance. Well then, now, have you considered of my speeches? I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid on't. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy? True, my lord. So is he mine, and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrust against my nearest of life, 
and though I could with barefaced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not, for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall who I myself struck down. And thence it is that I to your assistance do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Though our lives... Your spirits shine through you. Within this hour at most I will advise you where to plant yourselves. Acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on't, for it must be done to-night. Fleance, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. Nought's had, all spent, or our desire is got without content. Tis safer to be that which we destroy, than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst, nor steel, nor poison, malice domestic, foreign levy. Nothing can touch him further. Come on, gentle, my lord, sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests to-night. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou know'st that Banquo in his fleance lives. But in them nature's copies not a turn. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Thou marvel'st at my words. But hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So prithee go with me. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. But who did bid thee join with us? Macbeth. He needs not our mistrust, since he delivers our offices and what we have to do to the direction just. Then stand with us. The west yet glimmers with some streaks of day. Now spurs the lated traveller apace to gain the timely inn, and near approaches the subject of our watch. Hark! I hear horses. Then tis he. The rest that are within the note of expectation are already in the court. Tis he. It will be rain tonight. Let it come down. O oh, treachery! Fly, good Fleance, fly, fly, fly. Thou mayst revenge. O <coughs> oh, slave! There's but one down. The sun has fled. We have lost best half of our affair. Well, let's away and say how much is done. You know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. Our self will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. There's blood upon thy face. Tis Banquo's then. "'Tis better thee without than he within. "'Is he dispatched? "'My lord, his throat is cut. "'That did I for him.' <laughs> "'Thou art the best of the cutthroats. "'Yet he is good that did the like for Fleance. "'Most royal sir, Fleance escaped. "'Then comes my fit again. "'I get else been perfect. 
but Banquo's safe? Ay, my good lord, safe in a ditch he bides, with twenty trenched gashes on his head. The least a death to nature. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. Here had we now our country's honour roofed. May it please your highness sit. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did it! Never shake thy gory locks at me! Gentlemen, rise, his highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray you keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought he will again be well. Pretty, see there! Behold! Look! Lo! How say you? Why? What care I? If thou canst nod, speak too! If charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back, our monuments shall be the maws of kites! What quite unmanned in folly! If I stand here, I saw him! I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and health to all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine, fill full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here, to all and him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and the pledge. Avant! And quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless. Thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night, and better health. Attend his majesty. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move, and trees to speak. How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I will tomorrow. And betimes I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know, by the worst means, the worst, for mine own good, all causes shall give way. I am in blood stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as go o'er. Strange things I have in head, that will to hand, which must be acted, ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. <laughs> Come, go to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Thrice the brinded cat hath mewed. Thrice and once the hedge pig whined. Harpier cries, tis time, tis time. Round about the cauldron go, in the poisoned entrails throw. Toad that under cold stone, days and nights has thirty-one. Sweltered venom sleeping got, boil thou first in the charm pot. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn, cauldron bubble. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? I conjure you by that which you profess. Howe'er you come to know it, answer me to what I ask you. Speak. Demand. 
will answer. Say, if thou'st rather hear it from our mouths, or from our masters. Call him. Let me see him. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Beware, Macduff, beware the thane of Fife. Dismiss me, enough. Whate'er thou art, for thy good caution thanks, thou hast harped my fear aright. But one word more. He will not be commanded. Here's another, more potent than the first. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. And I three years I'd hear thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance double sure, and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this? that rises like the issue of a king, and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty. Listen, but speak not to it. Be lion metal proud and take no care. Who chafes, who frets, or where conspires are. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dusnean Hill shall come against him. That will never be. Who can impress the forest? Bid the tree unfix his earth-bound root. Sweet bodement's good, yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on you. Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down! Thy crown does sear mine eyeballs, and thy hair. Thou other gold-bound brow is like the first, the third is like the former. Filthy hags, why do you show me this? A fourth? Start eyes! What will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet, a seventh. I'll see no more. And yet the eighth appears, who bears a glass which shows me many more. And some I see, that twofold balls and treble scepters carry. Horrible sight! Now I see tis true. For the blood boltered Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for his. Where are they? Gone? Infected be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. Time, thou anticipatest my dread exploits. The flighty purpose never is o'ertook, unless the deed go with it. From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. And even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done, the castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the sword, his wife his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do, before this purpose cool. Let us seek out some desolate shade, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. 
Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men bestride our downfallen birthdom. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Whither indeed before thy here approach, old seaward with ten thousand warlike men already at a point were setting forth now will together and the chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel why are you silent such welcome and unwelcome things at once tis hard to reconcile see who comes here my countrymen my ever gentle cousin welcome hither stands scotland where it did alas poor country when I came hither to transport the tidings which I have heavily borne, there ran a rumour of many worthy fellows that were out, which was to my belief witnessed the rather, for that I saw the tyrant's power afoot. Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Be it their comfort, we are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good seaward and ten thousand men an older and a better soldier none that christendom gives out would i could answer this comfort with the like but i have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them if it be mine keep it not from me quickly let me have it let not your ears despise my tongue for ever which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard your castle is surprised your wife and babe savagely slaughtered my children too wife children servants all that could be found and i must be from thence my wife killed too i have said he has no children all my pretty ones did you say all oh elkite all what all my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop dispute it like a man i shall do so but I must also feel it as a man. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart. Enrage it. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes and braggart with my tongue. But, gentle heavens, cut short all intermission. Front to front, bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself. Within my sword's length, set him. This tune goes manly. Come, we go to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer ye may. The night is long that never finds the day. two nights watch with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed, yet all this while in a most fast sleep. Lo you, here she comes, this is her very guise, and upon my life, fast asleep. Observe her. Stand close. How came she by that light? Why, it stood by her. She has light by her continually. Tis her command. You see, her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I have known her continue in this a quarter of an hour. Yet here's a spot. Hark, she speaks. Out damned spot out i say one two why then tis time to do it <sighs> hell is murky fie my lord fie a soldier and a feared what need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? Do you mark that? 
The Thane of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? What will these hands ne'er be clean? Here's the smell of the blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh. 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 What a sigh is there. The heart is sorely charged. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried, he cannot come out on his grave. Even so? To bed, to bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come, 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 give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed, to bed. Will she go now to bed? Directly. Foul whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds to their deaf pillows will discharge their secrets. More needs she the divine than the physician. The English power is near, led on by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. Revengers burn in them for their dear causes would to the bleeding and grim alarm excite the mortified man. Near Burnham Wood. Shall we well meet them? That way are they coming. What does the tyrant? Great Dunsinane, he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad. Others, that lesser hate him, do call it valiant fury. But for certain, he cannot buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murder sticking on his hands. Now minutely revolts upbraid his faith breach. Those he commands move only in command, nothing in love. Now does he feel his title hang loose about him like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly all. Till Burnham Wood removed to Dunsinane, I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth, no man that's born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then fly, false thanes, and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I sway by, and the heart I bear, shall never sag with doubt, nor shake with fear. The devil damn thee black, thou cream-faced loon! Where gots thou that goose look? There is ten thousand soldiers, sir. Go prick thy face and overred thy fear, thou lily-livered boy! What soldiers, Patch? Death of thy soul! Those linen cheeks of thine are counsellors to fear. What soldiers, wayface? The English force, so please you. Take thy face hence. Seton! I am sick at heart when I behold. Seton, I say! What is your gracious pleasure? I'll fight, till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bough and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host, and make discovery err in report of us. It shall be done. Hang out our banners on the outward walls. The cry is still, they come. Our castle's strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Here let them lie, till famine and the ague eat them up. Were they not forced with those that should be ours, we might have met them dareful, beard to beard, and beat them backward home. <coughs> <coughs> what is that noise? It is the cry of women, my good lord. If 
have almost forgot the taste of fears. The time has been my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek, and my fell of hair would at a dismal treatise rouse and stir as life were in it. I have supped full with horrors. Direness, familiar to my slaughterous thoughts, cannot once start me. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, creeps in this petty pace from day to day, to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. The poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Gracious, my lord, I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. As I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and Annan, methought, the wood began to move. Liar and slave! Let me endure your wrath, if it be not so. If thou speak'st false, upon the next tree shall thou hang alive till famine cling thee. I pull in resolution, and begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth. Fear not, till Burnham Wood do come to Dunsinane, and now a wood comes toward Dunsinane. Arm, arm and out! If this which he avouches does appear, there is nor flying hence, nor tarrying here. I begin to be aweary of the sun and wish the estate of the world were now undone. Ring the alarum bell, blow wind, come rack. At least we'll die with harness on our back. They have tied me to a stake. I cannot fly, but bear-like I must fight the course. What's he that was not born of woman? Such a one am I to fear, or none. What is thy name? Thou'lt be afraid to hear it. No, though thou callst thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name's Macbeth. Devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No, no more fearful. Thou liest, abhorred tyrant. With my sword I'll prove the lie thou speak'st. Thou wast born <coughs> of woman. <laughs> but swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn, brandished by man that's of a woman born. <laughs> way the noise is. Tyrant, show thy face. If thou beest slain and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Turn, hellhound, turn. Of all men else I have avoided thee. But get thee back. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. <laughs> Thou losest labor, 
as easy mayest thou the entrenchant air with thy keen sword impress as make me bleed. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life, which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and at the angel whom thou still hast served, tell thee, Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Cursed be that tongue that tells me so, for it hath cowed my better part of man. And be these juggling fiends no more believed that palter with us in a double sense, that keep the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee, as our rarer monsters are, painted on a pole and under it. Here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet, and to be baited with the rabble's curse. Though Burnham Wood be come to Dunsinane, and thou oppose being of no woman born, yet I will try the last. Before my body I throw my warlike shield. Lay on, Macduff! And damned be him that first cries, Hold! Enough! I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Hail, King, for so thou art. Behold where stands the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's pearl that speak my salutation in their minds, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King, King of, of Scotland! Scotland.